Hello and welcome back to the Hudson Hangout. Today I'm interviewing Chris Gabenstein, who is another number one best-selling author for kids. He has written many books that I love, including the Lemon Cello series, the Welcome to Wonderland series, and the Island of Dr. Libreras. He, of, he often co-wrote with superstar author James Patterson. Hello, Chris. Hi, how are you doing? Good. Let's get this interview on with. All right, let's get rolling. Let's not waste any time at all. Let's just keep going. Okay. Okay. Why did you be decide to become an author? Why did I become decide to become an author? Well, I wanted to be a writer ever since I was about your age. When I was like in the fifth grade, I used to write stories and comic books for my friends, and they'd laugh at them. Then in sixth grade, I wrote skits for my buddies to act in. Then in seventh grade, I had an English teacher who liked to laugh and I liked to write funny homework assignments. And she wrote in the margins of one of my papers, you will make your living as a writer someday. And when a teacher tells you something, I'm just gonna be honest with you, you know it's gotta be true because teachers take a solemn vow to never ever lie to children. So from that point on, I wanted to be a writer and in high school I had some great English teachers and I learned all about Shakespeare and Hemingway and Mark Twain. I went to journalism and advertising and broadcasting is what I studied in college. Then I moved to New York City with seven suitcases, a typewriter and a dream. And I started uh, acting in improv comedy troops and I started writing for the Muppets and I wrote a made for TV movie. And then around 1984, before I think you were born, were you born in 1984? I don't think you were. Uh, in 1984, I got a job writing television commercials. And my first boss in advertising was a guy named James Patterson. And James Patterson left advertising and started writing books. I don't know if you ever heard of this guy, James Patterson. He's a little known author and wow. he left and about 20 years later let's see in the year 2000 yeah 2001 i quit advertising started writing books so i wanted to become an author uh in 2001 when i was tired of writing advertising and my first book was published in 2005 that's my whole life story it flashed before my eyes like that what was your first book my first book, if you look up on this shelf behind me, there's one copy of every book of mine that's ever been published. And down here, it all started with this little pink one down here called Tilt-A-Whirl. And that was a murder mystery for adults that won an award that year for the best first mystery. Ah, uh, I've read a bunch of the books that you did with uh, uh, James Patterson. Uh-huh. Here. Wow, you got a few of them. I see some iFunnies and some Max Einsteins. Oh, you got some of mine too. Yeah, I, got, I, I read all the Lemon Cellos and all the Welcome to Wonderlands. Oh, that's great. Yeah, the Wonderlands are very funny. They've won a couple of awards or they're up higher up here. Ooh, they won area up here. Some of the awards the books have won. These ones they're over right, here. Are, all, all four of them are right here. Yeah, they, they won a bunch of awards for being the funniest books of the year and that kind of stuff. Mr. Lemoncello won a bunch of awards too. This is my awards place back there. Okay. How did you become an author, especially a famous one? Well, I don't know if I'm famous. Somebody here in my apartment building asked me if I was famous once. And I said, if I was, would you have to ask me that question? Because uh, I don't know if authors ever really get famous. We sometimes get popular. Uh, it's, it was a lot of hard work because my first book, this one down here came out. I wrote nine books in the adult series. I wrote some thrillers. And then, uh, then I started writing some ghost stories that won some awards, but only like a few people heard of. And it wasn't until I'd been doing it for seven or eight years that a book called Escape from Mr. Lemoncello's Library came out. And that one, woo, that became a big bestseller. It was on the New York Times bestseller list for 111 weeks. But you know, nothing happens like overnight. You have to put a lot of hard work in. So my first book that anyone ever heard of was probably my 20th or 30th book that I had written. Mm -hmm. Okay. What was your favorite book as a kid? Oh, as a kid, I have some of them right back there. These are mad books. Because when I was a kid, 
We didn't read books like you get to read in school. We had to read something called SRA, which was a big box of color-coded essays. And when you read the red ones and you answered the questions, you got to move on to the blue ones. We didn't read books in school. So I would save up all my money and I got a subscription to Mad Magazine when I was 10 years old. And then every summer we'd go on vacation to Florida and there was a place there called Web City. And they had a kind of a book section. And I'd go in there and buy like six or maybe a dozen mad books with all, because they were only like 25 cents or 50 cents back then. And I'd save up my money all year. And that's what I'd splurge on. And mad, I don't know if you've ever read mad magazines. I, not, I, I read a few of them. I also, not as got, good. I also have a whole book of, um, of spy or spy little yeah. comics. So a lot of the parodies and the satire they did taught me more about the sense of humor and using words uh, than any book I might have read when I was a kid. Okay. How did you get ideas for your for a book and how long did it take to write a book? Oh, it's interesting because I've just spent this week, uh, what I do now, because I'm very fortunate, I have some wonderful friends at Random House who publish most of my books I do on my own. And what I did all week today is I put together seven ideas for books. And I just write one or two uh, pages about what they might be about. Most of the books start with what if. So for instance, uh, what if there was a boy who discovered that he had tiny little aliens about this big, the size of army men living in his attic. So that's like a what if. What if there were two brothers who were eating at one of those pancake places where they give you the place maps with the pirate treasure map. And on one of their place maps, there was a real treasure map. And so you see, you just start with that what if, and that's where you start the story and you spin it out from there, build your characters, have lots of twists and turns. Ah, uh, what was your favorite book to write? My favorite book to write is probably the one called Shine, exclamation point, which I don't see in your stack back there, young man. I no, see my it. mom just, I think my mom just ordered it for the last okay. time. Okay, it's my favorite because I wrote with my wife and we had a lot of fun writing that book together. It also has a great message and a lot of uh, uh, schools have picked it up and they're like studying it like the whole fifth grade or whatever is reading it because it's it's got it's got a lot of fun but also has a lot of heart to it ah what series are you most proud of what series am I most proud of? Probably the Lemon Cello series because I get emails from kids and parents alike who see I was a reluctant reader when I was growing up. I did not read as much as you seem to. I only wanted books that got like a movie started in my head. I did not want to read the broccoli books, the books everybody said were good for me. And I get a lot of emails from parents and kids who say that my son, my daughter, they hated to read until they picked up Escape from Mr. Lemoncello's library. Now they love to read. So there's something about the interactive nature of that book and all the games in it, and of course the fun and the characters that gets a lot of kids who aren't excited about reading, excited about reading. Mm -hmm. I love the Lemoncello series too. Great, yeah, this one. And the new one's coming out August 25th. Oh, a fifth, a fifth, a fifth one? A fifth one comes out on August 25th, so it's not too far away. And we're going to leave the library and go to the town, the factory town, where Mr. Lemoncello makes all of his games. And it's going to be the company picnic day. And you might imagine Mr. Lemoncello's Game Works factory is yeah, a pretty the, Is it the Imagination Factory? Of the no. Imagination Factories in New York, that's like the marketing headquarters. This is the factory where they actually make the games. Oh. Uh, and it's really, it's a zany place. And every year they have a big company picnic where they block off a block of Main Street and they turn the squares of the sidewalk into an outdoor living board game. And this year, whoever wins the games at the company picnic will be the first ones inside a brand new mysterious building that Mr. Lemoncello has erected behind his factory that nobody knows what goes on inside that building. Okay. I know, I know. If you could meet any famous person, who would you meet? If I could meet any famous person, who would I meet, alive or dead? But either. Oh. Either or. Well, let's see. A dead person I'd like to meet is William Shakespeare because I love his plays. Me and too. a living person I'd like to meet is Bruce Springsteen 
because I love his music. You probably don't even know who Bruce Springsteen is. I don't. But I love his music. Okay. Do you have any advice for kids who, str who struggle at start at to write books? Struggle to write? Uh, struggle yeah, my, to start to write. Yes, yeah, hard time to write. Yeah, and you know what it is? You have to give yourself permission to write a really bad, terrible, stinky, no good first draft. Just pretend, never show your first draft of anything to anybody. That's just for you. Because I think kids, uh, you know, we, we're all, when we're kids, we're trying to get an A, and we're trying to get good grades. And so we want the thing to be perfect. But nothing is perfect the first time. You know that book, Escape from Mr. Lemoncello's Library? Yeah. I worked on that book for two whole years and rewrote 50% of the entire manuscript about eight different times. Nobody gets it right the first time, so quit trying to get it right the first time. Give yourself permission to write a bad first draft, double space it so you can go back, cut things out, make changes, and think of that as just like the fun draft. You're just gonna put down the silliest stuff that comes right out of your head, get it down on paper, then once something's on paper, you can go back and tighten it up and say, well, I don't need this, this is not, oh, this part should really happen down here. And uh, other things, always write as if nobody wants to read what you've written, that you have to earn their attention with every single sentence and page that you write. Okay. Any other books are, go are, any other books are going to be made into shows, games, or movies because uh, you just made a new uh, deal? Okay. Yeah, you just saw I got a new deal. Well, there's people are looking at a new book of mine called The Smartest Kid in the Universe, which won't even be out till uh, November 3rd, but we already have, you know, advanced copies and there's some people in Hollywood looking at that one. And they're gonna look at another book called Dog Squad. And I think they're gonna look at Shine and Welcome to Wonderland, which I think would make a great like series on Nickelodeon or someplace. So there are some people looking and getting excited about it. And some of the books I did with James Patterson, like I think Max Einstein, I Funny, Treasure Hunters, and maybe House of Robots are all in development, as they say, to become TV shows. Where can people find you online? Online, you can go to chrisgrabenstein.com, which is C-H-R-I-S, G-R-A-B-E-N-S-T-E-I-N.com. And I'm on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Okay. Thank you for joining me, Chris. Hey, it was fun to be with you. Keep up the good work. I'm impressed by you, young man. Bye.